Andreas, can you just tell us a little bit more about the genetics of familial chylomicronemia syndrome? Do we know what genes cause this, and is that something we can screen for? So familial chylomicronemia syndrome, it's what we call in the medical world an autosomal recessive disorder, which basically means that for the patient to develop the disease, mom and dad have to be a carrier. They don't have to have the disease. If they have the disease, you already know they have it and that they have the genetic mutation. But what we frequently see in the real world is that mom and dad are healthy, they don't have any problems, then they have a child that ends up developing the disease. So that's something that I frequently explain to the patients so they can understand that even though the name is familial calomacronemia syndrome, not always there's a familial component and they may be the first ones to have this condition. Occasionally, we do see that the patient and siblings have the condition. And what if someone is extremely overweight, so obese, so they have high blood pressure or have diabetes mellitus? Is that contributing to FCS, or does that tell us we should be looking for an, another cause of their high triglycerides and that it's not FCS? And that's also a very good question because it's very important when we have a patient with elevated triacylglycerides that it's leading to pancreatitis to rule out common conditions that may lead to elevation in the triacylglycerides with subsequent pancreatitis. And what you said, it's true. What we see the most, it's patients with diabetes, particularly when it's poorly controlled, patients actually that they didn't know they had diabetes and they're coming to the hospital with what it's called diabetic ketoacidosis, that the levels of sugar are very high and having very high levels of sugars for different mechanisms would also increase the levels of triacylglycerides. But there you have a reason why the elevation of the triacylglycerides is happening. So one of the first things that we do is to rule all of them out. And again, we also have some medications that are known to elevate the levels of triacylglycerides. An interesting comment that we sometimes see, it's during pregnancy, particularly in the third semester, it's very normal, and that's what we call physiologic. It happens frequently, and absolutely nothing happens to the mother, that the triacylglyceride levels will go up a little bit. But in occasions, we see these patients coming in with very high elevation in the triacylglyceride levels with pancreatitis. So it's very important to rule out other conditions before we start to think about familial calomacronemia syndrome. So if my doctor thinks I have FCS, it sounds like, as you mentioned, this is autosomal recessive, meaning usually mom and dad are carriers. So if I have siblings, brothers and sisters, should they be screened if my doctor thinks I have FCS? For example, if my sister happens to have abdominal pain? If other conditions have been ruled out, absolutely yes. All of your siblings should be looked out for this condition, at least with a simple test of triacylglyceride levels to make sure that they don't have the conditions. Patients with this condition will have one in four chances of developing the disease. But that doesn't mean even if there are two siblings, both of them may have it. The more siblings they have, the higher the risk. So in general, when we make the diagnosis in one sibling, all of the others are gonna be tested. Mm -hmm.